hello. <laughs> Hi, hello. Uh, I don't know how to start this video. Um, I got rejected. Why? Uh, now is like that time where pretty much every high school senior, senior, high school senior, where every high school senior is getting back their results from universities. They go on social media and everyone's kind of just posting about their university acceptances or their friends' university acceptances and it literally feels like my whole school got into the uni of their dreams and I'm just... I didn't even like really tell anyone as such that I didn't get in. Obviously with this isolation thing, I haven't been interacting with anyone, so I haven't had to tell anyone about it. Otherwise, when school is still open, every day I'd walk into class, my teacher is like, Miss Hayat, any good news for me? And I'm just like, soon, <laughs> soon. Obviously, I didn't want to like tell the whole world that I got rejected. And then that's where like, I kind of had this realization. I'm not the only one who got rejected. More than acceptances, there are rejections. No one posts about their rejections. Honestly, anywhere you go, like go online, it's always stuff like getting my dream house, getting my dream car, getting my dream job, living the dream life. People only like to share and talk about their successes. And honestly, even me, I would have loved this video to have been a getting into my dream university video, but it's not. Uh, so anyway, story time. Hold on, I need a burp. Excuse me. <laughs> now when it came to university, I was never really interested in like really big name universities in like the US or the UK. I grew up in New Zealand and in New Zealand, everyone kind of like graduates together and then ends up going to the same universities together as well. So I was never really that big on like going to some fancy university. All I really wanted was to just go to a university from where I could get a good degree that would be recognized in the world with like a, a decent education system, a nice country, clean environment, nice people. I was perfectly fine with going to a very simple university. You know, initially I was like, New Zealand seems like the best option in my scenario. Anyway, so an opportunity in Qatar popped up. We have a family friend who studied at Northwestern University in Qatar. He was an alumni and he was a full scholarship student. So through this family friend, we were kind of introduced to NUQ. He knew about my videos, he knew about my work, he knew that I was passionate about media since I was literally like a kid. Immediately, my family was like really on board. My mom and dad, they thought it was a really good opportunity. And next thing you know, we were on our way to Qatar. Okay, this is all happening around late November 2019. I didn't want to go there. I was just like, what the heck? Like, I didn't even have like any negative opinion towards guitar because it's so irrelevant. It never crossed my mind. Honestly, like I went there and I really like wanted to hate it, but then I got there and I couldn't hate it. I couldn't even dislike it because I fell in love with it. No, but really, I really, really did fall in love with it. I really loved the place. It was so nice. I actually made a video about it. I'll like link it there somewhere. Or will I link it? Should I link it? I don't know. It's kind of embarrassing. I made a video and they rejected me, so. so. I went to the university. I, oh my God, it was, if you're an aspiring media person, Northwestern University in Qatar was like the best place. I first started making videos when I was like 10 years old. I used to make videos with my little toys. Hi everyone, it's Alina. We're by the campfire. Well, there's really no fire right now, but um... Don't bother looking though, I have very long ago privated those videos. I don't know what regular 10, 11, 12 year olds were doing, but this is what I was doing when I was 10, 11, 12. I would create like massive sets in my room, put up a sign on my door, you know, Alina's production house, filming in progress, don't come in. I'd sit there for like a week and I'd be filming like episode after episode and I'd make all these stories. And I even used to upload to YouTube. And the day my dad bought me my first camera, I was like over the moon. I even still have the camera. It's covered in dust and it doesn't work anymore, but this is where it began. This thing made me literally the happiest 11 year old in the world. Then I kind of grew out of my toys and I stopped making toy videos. I used to gather my friends up and be like, guys, I'm making a short film. Any school assignment, if there was a video option or an essay option, I always, always, always went for the video option. That's what I did, that was me. You know, all the students, my family, my relatives, my teachers, my family friends, they all knew that like media was my thing. And this media thing was so much more than just a passion. It was literally something that I was identified with. So when I came to Northwestern, it felt like a place that was made for me. 
It was so nice. It was so, so, so nice. And um, I had a meeting with like, I don't want to like say who it was, um, with like an in charge person, like someone who was in charge. And this interview, the purpose of this meeting that I had was for them to convince me to apply. Because initially I was like, hmm, you know, I tell them about myself, I show them my work, and they're just like, wow, you're just made to be a wildcat. And I was just like, yeah. Meeting went great. The tour went great. It all went great. And I'm just like, yes. As soon as I get back to Pakistan, I immediately signed up for the SAT. The only available testing date that I could sign up for before the application deadline was on the 7th of December. And that was just over a week away. I didn't even have a proper ticket. I had a waitlist ticket. And I just had to pray that on the day I would get a seat. So it's Saturday and I look like an egg. But I bought almonds because nuts make you smart. I signed up for an SAT completely clueless. I have never in my life given an SAT before. Like when it comes to CIEs, when it comes to exams, straight up, not to like flicks or anything, but my grades are good. <laughs> but when it comes to a standardized test, especially like, come on guys, if you've done the SAT, you know what I'm talking about. People study for the SAT months before their test. I had to study for an SAT in like literally a week. And just to add on to that, I have the mathematic abilities of a second grader. I'm not even joking. My 12 year old sister can do maths better than I can. I've dropped maths as a subject like three years ago. So I have like literally like no practice. In this one week, I have to like drill all this algebra cancer into my head plus all this u.s history reading like what the heck i hate algebra so much you're not supposed to find your ex you're supposed to block your ex but anyway i gave my sat it was terrible but then again sat was yet another thing we spoke about while i was in qatar with the in charge person you know I, I told them straight up i'm like yo i've never given an sat i don't you know like i don't think i have much time to prepare and all that jazz and straight up you know what they told me we don't have a fixed entrance score sat is just a formality we need talent and creativity and passion so i knew i had a bad score but other than that i know for a fact that my application was strong so the first of january came around and i submitted my application i was confident in myself and I was happy with what I submitted. Now all I had to do was hope and pray and wait. In this waiting period, obviously I thought about this university a lot. You know, I watched student life videos and campus tour videos and dorm room tour videos. And I was excited. I was really, really, really excited to start like the proper uni life with like a bunch of new people in a new place doing what I love. And then one day I was having breakfast and I got an email. Your application status has been updated. And I was just like, oh my God, like, oh my God, oh my God. And I'm just like opening up the email. I'm like, oh my God, why is it taking so long to load? I open it up and I was just like, no way. My mom's in front of me and I'm like, mom, I didn't get in. And my mom's just like, <laughs> very funny. You're joking, right? I show her the email and she's like, and she she's shocked too. She's like, this can't be. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> I'm like, this has to be a mistake. I call up my dad. I tell my dad that I didn't get in. And my dad's also shocked. He's like, are you serious? Like, why? Then I sent a screenshot of the email to my family friend as well. We were all just like, what? It didn't make any sense. It was so sad. It felt like, it felt like a breakup. Yeah. It, it felt like the love of my life had dumped me and gone, it's not you. It's me. Up until now, I was trying my best to like hold myself together. And then my sister looks at me and she's like, Dad, Melina, you're holding up pretty well. I'm surprised you're not crying. And that, boys and girls, was the trigger. And I started crying and I'm just like, how did I not get in? And then after a couple of days of being sad and walking around my house like this, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna email them again and I'm gonna tell them that they made a mistake and I'm gonna give them a letter for why they should reconsider and all the reasons why they should have me at Northwestern. I wrote my heart out. <laughs> this is so embarrassing. I wrote my heart out to the university. And honestly, I didn't expect anything to come out of this. I didn't really think they would actually reconsider. At this point, I didn't really have anything else to lose except my dignity. But then I figured I didn't want to have regrets later. Like I wanted to know that I did everything possible before I accepted that I didn't get in. But anyway, a couple of days later, the university responds again. And at this point, um, I didn't just get rejected by my dream uni once. I got rejected by my dream uni twice. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get in. So uh, that was the story. That's how it happened. Now let's talk about feelings. I seem a lot more chill about it now, and that's only because I've had like a few weeks to like deal with it, to embrace it, to come to terms with it. But I mean, at the time, I was really DL. I blamed myself. I was a failure. I wasn't good enough. And I feel like it's really hard 
to not blame yourself in a situation like that. All these people around me always have these like really high hopes and expectations from me and I just really felt like I disappointed everyone. When I told all my friends and relatives about Northwestern and how I wanted to apply, everyone who knows me was just like, Alina, you're getting in. Not just getting in, you're probably getting a scholarship. <laughs> scholarship. Scholarship. You know, when people like believe in you so much and really like expect so much from you, it just really, I really, really felt like I was such a big disappointment. There's nothing else in the world that I feel 100% about. When it comes to media, like I just know, like I'm 100% about media. I found myself doubting myself in the only one thing that I've always been 100% about. You're sitting here right now and you just got rejected and you feel like you're not good enough. Here's me telling you that you are good enough, okay? You don't need a university acceptance to validate you. You don't need a 1500 or a 1600 SAT score to validate you. What we see in front of us is just a bunch of success. What we don't see is the failure. And that's because talking about failures is difficult. It's difficult to come to terms with and it's difficult to tell everyone about it too. So maybe today I'm not in the place where I want to be. I do feel extremely lost. I do feel extremely confused. I really don't know where the future is headed right now. But I like to think of it like this. A year down the line, two years down the line, okay, maybe three years down the line, it's not gonna matter. Right now, it may feel like the world is ending, quite literally. I'm just kind of taking a step back, reevaluating my options, figuring out what to do next. I'm still gonna try my best in anything I do, no matter where I go. Um, and then honestly, just trust the higher power and see where I go from there. Anyway, so that is it for this rejection story time thing. Hope you're all staying at home and washing your hands and looking after yourselves and uh, okay, bye. What a wonderful